Chapter Four of God Died at Three O'Clock by Reverend Gerald T. Brennan. The Slippervox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Maria Therese. Peter weeps. Jerusalem, the great city of the Jews. Here Christ has preached often and worked many miracles. Here in this same city, only a few days ago, the people gave him a royal welcome and shouted that they wanted him to be their king. Things are different now as Christ's enemies lead him bound through the quiet streets. The city is cold and dark on this Thursday night. Once more Jerusalem receives Jesus, this time not in glory but in shame. At the home of Annas, the guards turn in and Jesus follows them. At one time Annas had been the high priest, and even yet he is a man of power among the Jews. Caiaphas, his son-in-law, is the high priest now, and together they have plotted the death of Jesus. Annas is hard and cruel, a man without mercy. He seems pleased to see Christ standing as a prisoner before him. Tell me what you have taught, Annas says roughly to Jesus. Why do you ask me, replies the prisoner calmly. Ask them who have listened to me, they know what I said. Christ is still the master, and the wicked old Annas is stung by the prisoner's words. Annas knows what Christ means. Annas must prove that Christ has done wrong. He must bring forth witnesses. Has anyone seen Christ do anything wrong? Christ dares Annas to prove it. Christ is demanding a trial. Jesus is ready to face a trial, but Annas is not ready. Annas is not the high priest. He has no power to call the judges. He orders the guards to take the prisoner to Caiaphas. As Annas walks away, he knows that it will not be easy to condemn Jesus to death. Christ does not expect any fairness in the house of Caiaphas. The high priest is the chief judge in this trial where Christ's life is at stake. But the high priest is also Christ's chief enemy. It was he who gave the order to arrest Jesus, and already Caiaphas has told the other judges that the teacher of Nazareth must die. Now the judges of Jerusalem are gathered in the palace of the high priest, and the trial of Jesus begins. Caiaphas is in control. He is not looking for the truth as a judge ought to do. He is a murderer seeking blood. He calls upon witnesses to tell what they know about Christ, and they all speak lies. Some say that Jesus breaks the law. Others say that he is the friend of sinners. Still others claim that he works for the devil. These men speak the lies that Annas and Caiaphas had taught them. During this evil trial, Jesus stands before Caiaphas and the other judges with his head bowed. He is a sad figure, and he says nothing. Even when they lie about him, Jesus does not answer. It is useless to argue here. Jesus only listens and suffers in silence. But the silence of Jesus worries Caiaphas, and the lies worry the judges. If the judges are to condemn Christ to death, Caiaphas feels he must make the prisoner speak. Standing in his place, the high priest faces Jesus. Have you nothing to say? he asks, and his voice is angry. Jesus does not answer. His judges have not been able to find anything wrong in him, and Jesus refuses to argue against lies. The prisoner's silence makes the high priest very angry. Tell us, he demands, are you the Christ, the Son of God? This question breaks the silence of Jesus. I am, he answers calmly. Caiaphas pretends to be shocked at Christ's claim to be the Son of God. He turns to the other judges. Do they not believe that Christ has insulted God, he asks. Do they not believe that Christ must be put to death? The judges nod their heads gravely. The prisoner, they agree, is guilty of death. Seeing that the judges hate Christ so bitterly, the guards now treat their prisoner with great cruelty. They blindfold Jesus and then strike him with their hands. Others mock him, make fun of him, and even spit in his face. Jesus can do nothing to defend himself. His hands are tied. He suffers the blows and insults of his guards without speaking a word. 
The evil Caiaphas now plots his next step against Christ. The judges have condemned Jesus to death, but Caiaphas cannot carry out this order unless Pilate, the Roman governor, allows it. So Caiaphas orders the guards to hold the prisoner until morning, when he will be brought before Pilate. While Caiaphas has worked for the death of Christ, a crowd has gathered in the courtyard of his palace. Here servants and a few strangers warm themselves near a fire. Among them is one friend of Jesus. It is the Apostle Peter. Still hopeful that his master may escape, Peter has slipped into the courtyard to see what will happen. But the servants recognize Peter as a friend of the prisoner. First one accuses him, then another. Each time the fearful Peter denies that he knows Christ. Then a third servant accuses Peter of being a follower of Christ. Angrily, Peter declares that he does not know the man. At this moment, Peter looks up to see the sad face of Jesus looking at him. Peter has denied his master. Like Judas, he, too, is a traitor. Shocked by what he has done, Peter hurries from the courtyard of Caiaphas. Alone outside, Peter begins to weep for having denied Jesus, but through his tears the sorry apostle sees hope. Jesus will forgive. Jesus will always love Peter. End of chapter 4